Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Family Matters for this week. Uh, this week we have Grant, Julie, and Glenn Anderson um, with us, and they're all the way from Detroit in America. And we're going to continue a session that we started in the last one about about suffering and um, and growing through suffering. Now, Grant uh, suffered a huge accident on the way home from a Bible camp. Uh, 13 years ago, um, he was in a coma for weeks. Um, they didn't think he would live at all, but he came through it. Uh, they said that he would be a vegetable if he did live. And uh, well, we have Grant sitting right in front of us today, which is really cool and definitely not a vegetable. <laughs> so it's very exciting. So last week we last week we heard all about we heard a lot about the accident, and we heard a lot about the um, the initial recovery. Um, this week we want to continue with that, and we want to see what's what's happened since that time, since those first year or so, um, and how how that recovery has has been or come to the completion that it is today, and also how that the experiences that you have experienced um, have been able to to reach out and and comfort others through them, and so. Let's just open with a word of prayer and then we'll do a Bible reading uh, just to introduce this. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for, for bringing us together and for giving us this technology to be able to talk like this over, over the distance of, of this world. And we thank you for this special family, Heavenly Father. We thank you for their love and their devotion to you. We thank you for their faith. And we thank you for the miracles that you've done in their lives. And we pray that you would continue to give that healing, but also through that healing and through those weaknesses, we pray that you would continue to make them strong in you and um, that their encouragement and comfort would spill over to encourage and comfort the rest of us. Please be with us this, today as we, as we talk together. Give us the wisdom that we need. Please. Help us to honour you in all that we do and say. We thank you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Right, the reading I wanted to do this time was um, from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 10. And this is what it says. This is, a, this is Jesus talking to Paul. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I thought that was really appropriate. I mean, last time you talked about about the the time in the hospital in those first few months, first few weeks, where it seemed like everyone came to visit, and through the weakness, I mean, Grant was you were in a coma and you couldn't even move, um, and through that that weakness, um, people saw the power and love of God because of all those visitors, and I think that's wonderful. So, welcome this morning. This today, here we go again, <laughs> to you all, it's really good to have you with us again, so thank you so much for sharing, thank you. And uh, so last, in our discussions last time, we talked about what family life was like before the accident, share with us now what family life started to look like post-accident. <laughs> 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 well, it was, uh, obviously, it, this, it was totally different. Um, we we had to, to, to renovate our home to physically um, make it handicap accessible for grants. So there was, you know, the physical changes and all the turmoil and decision making that went on with that, and then all of the decisions that we had to make in relation to his therapies, uh, you know, which therapies, which doctors, which uh, which programs to enroll Grant in that would be best for uh, for his recovery, 
and then the you know the very personal impact of those changes how they affected us you know, our marriage and our relationship with our children there were just so many you know facets to 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 this equation that you mentioned yeah, yeah just uh, was uh, you know some went very smoothly some didn't go so smoothly some were were overwhelming um, you know, some you just, you know, push to the back burner because you don't want to deal with them. And sometimes you're too exhausted to even to deal with some of the things, but because they're so overwhelming. But it was a very difficult time. You think that once we got out of the hospital, things would be easier, but they really weren't. They were just uh, harder in a different way. <laughs> I was out of the house more than most people, although I was for therapies and I built the regiment of going to the YMCA in Farmington, which is outside of Detroit, and swimming. Now I swim three or four miles a week, and it's like now I do So I get out more than most, most people. So yeah, he had a schedule of therapies that we had to keep up with, and somebody had to always be with him. Um, and we had a nine-year-old that we had to, you know, not had to, wanted to uh, be active in his life. And um, we had one of the room, in fact, the room that we're in right now has, uh, was just a, it was a three season room because in, in Michigan we have, well, actually we have two seasons, cold and not cold, but um, <laughs> yeah, there's Grant swimming. And he did a lot of, uh, we got him involved in disabled games of, you know, to, to be with people that had disabilities and, um, to feel that he was moving, uh, going someplace. But this room that we're in, we had to put a shower into this room because we couldn't get him upstairs into a shower. So we didn't have a shower downstairs. So there was a shower in our um, three season room, um, which later on we you know, built a bathroom for Grant down here in his own bedroom and that. But um, we had um, been told that he would only get so far after a year or maybe year and a half. Maybe it was a two years, maybe. You know, the, 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 the wisdom in the community is two years is what about your extent of recovery from traumatic brain injury. And what they're really saying is your dramatic improvement is two years and then everything kind of levels out. Um, it doesn't plateau, but then the improvements are much more gradual. And, and um, you know, that's you know basically the approach that the therapists take, but it wasn't the approach that that, that we put. You you could you could in therapies you can take the approach of, of adapt adaptation and and compensation. Accept where you are. Accept where you're at, or you can do therapies that are going to push you to recovery. And we chose, and Grant was on board with this, that we're going to push for recovery. And, and that's the approach that we've taken to the detriment of uh, you know, a lot of things, which maybe we shouldn't have uh, let go, um, to the consternation of a lot of the therapists and doctors who didn't agree with our approach, but we found people that would work with it, and, and that's what we did. And we think it proved it to be helpful. And we think it's proved to be helpful for them. Right? That made a lot of progress that, that he was not expected Definitely. to make. In fact, some of those doctors have come back to us and said that that whatever you're doing, keep doing. Keep doing it. Yep. And, you know, the things that would be put at the wayside would be, you know, like organized house, <laughs> which really is not that important. Some of the things, um, you know, uh, but we did have a nine-year-old and we did try to make sure he got what he needed, but it is very hard for uh, the siblings to get they don't have mom and dad the same way that they did before. And uh, so that does have its downsides. The other option would have been to put Grant in an institution, which is what they wanted us to do. You were for insurance companies. <laughs> Probably. Um, and even our friends thought it would be too, too much work for us. Uh, it would, uh, you know, it would be too much for us, but we were not willing to do that. And our, and our family did agree to bring him to bring him home, so um, we were we were thankful for that. Yeah. And Glenn, you became full time caregiver. Is that correct? Yeah. We, what, what happened was we made a made in part of this decision process. You know, Julie had her own business, and I had just been teaching for a year 
with no guarantee of future employment. And we made the decision that I would stay home. We brought Grant home. I would stay with him, be his full-time caregiver. And uh, that's what we did. And you know, my whole view and, and career and everything changed. And, and I was doing something totally different than not only what I expected, but what I could even know how to do, you know, I had to learn all sorts of new things. All sorts of things. But uh, that, no, it was, uh, it was a, a big change. It really was. He, he did. He's, he's uh, accepted it very well, we think, and we're very thankful. But we did, after a time, uh, when we um, felt that Grant, we felt comfortable to have Grant, have other people take him to therapy. We do have aides with him you know, when he goes to therapies later on, we did get that. So we've had some of my cousins at first and now, first, yeah. now some people in the community uh, don't live far from us. Yeah, our, our age for him. So that, that makes it helpful. Yeah, so it's not quite a 24 seven deal right now. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So are you able to walk now, Grant? Yes, but not with perfect form and not as quick as I'd like. And other people are like my hip, well, my left hip, it needs strengthening. That's a PT, is the goal of PT. To, and therefore, because of the hip's weakness and the glute weakness, my balance is not very good. And left side blindness makes walking very difficult because yes. he's not, he can't see both sides. Yeah. And so there is a... So I'll never drive again, which is a nice thing and a bad thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's wasn't supposed to walk or move his legs at all. So he can lift up his, his left leg and, and do quite a bit with it. And then I'm able to start to play two-handed piano music. That's, that's oh, great. Wow. In fact, just yesterday, he had a breakthrough. Um, do you remember what it was with the piano? Um, with your, he's got a mobile arm support that holds out one finger. Or, yeah. And it allows no, me to move my, my, my mobile arm support supports my elbow, so you don't have to hike the shoulder. And I could focus on just the fingers, and I'm able to play a scale with one. Yeah, but what did you do yesterday? Do you remember what you did yesterday mm -hmm. with two? Oh, I, I played two notes at the same time with, with one his hand. Left hand. Instead of just one finger, his, his other oh. finger actually activated, and and now he was playing with two fingers. But that was huge. Yeah. That was that's the latest. Good. That's the latest. Just a dozen days. Oh, that's, that's good. It is excellent. That's really yeah. good. It's just one day at a time. I just didn't take it one, two, five steps at a time. He took it one day at a time, and we can do the same thing in our life. It's, it's, uh, Grant's used this theme of his therapy in a number of exhortations, where in therapy with a brain injury, repetition is the key. You do the motion again and again and again till your brain, your neural pathways in your brain are, are, are new ones are made so that that motion or that activity becomes easier. And he's applied that to our spiritual life where we practice the commandments of Christ. We practice good works. We practice showing love to our brothers and sisters, to others. And it's just amazing how Grant's world of physical therapy kind of mirrors what our spiritual life should be. And we need to practice these things. It just doesn't come like that. And that's the, one of the reasons why we're in an ecclesia so we need people to practice our spiritualness with. So we're in ecclesia to do that. Yeah. And we're not called to monasticism. We're called to ecclesial life in the truth. And, and there's a real good reason for that. And, and Grant's really developed that theme quite a bit. One of the exhortations was on walking. And uh, what, did, what did you remember what you said about walking? How every step is what? Remember? Um, every step... You're, catching, you're keeping yourself from falling. You're moving forward and it's catching your balance and then you're comfortable moving forward and losing your balance and gaining your beginning balance. Yeah. So we're actually yeah. falling and getting our balance through life every day. And I suppose it's a lot like that, that quote that Paul says, forgetting what is behind and looking forward and move yep. toward that goal. Yes, that was also a verse that could apply to my talks and our discussions today. Thank you. Yeah, mm. that's cool. Uh, oh, for someone with a traumatic brain injury, you did something quite remarkable. 
Agra, uh, you you um you went back to university. What was it? A year after you, two years after your your, your injury. And what was it like? Your... You said... It was a lot more challenging, but it was it was very satisfying to have it completed and finally and. Because most people with my, my age bracket, when by the time I see them, they're they're graduated masters, they're bachelors, or some 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 of them a PhD even. Yeah, it so was how, very validating to finally have yeah. a degree, a mastery of the of the the subject which I I, I attempted to, to take on from a child like childhood. Yeah. Wow. So I had a gentleman yeah, actually change his, his degree. He was going for an education, education degree. To teach in the schools. And he had to. Uh, the education part. Yeah, he changed it from education to just a Bachelor of Arts in Music, right? Yeah. He didn't have to. Uh -huh. He just wanted to because he wanted, uh, to done, right? he wanted to get done. And he, he was so involved in therapies that it just made it difficult. Yeah, I want to focus on walking and hand usage rather than schooling or whatever. He did walk across the stage, though, to get his diploma. Well, that felt good. I felt really good to walk commencement at Wayne State University. Fantastic. Really good. Yeah. It took him six years to complete that last year of school. He was done with three years by the time he was 20 years old. Um, and it took him six years to finish the last year. But I got a whole degree, debt free, and yep. yeah, debt free. Yeah. That's important too. <laughs> a lot of people are in, in in debt because of yeah. They're, no. they're he's now working them. on um, teaching. He's going to try to teach piano again. That's yeah. his goal. Wow. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. So you've Good done boys. quite a you've done quite a lot of public speaking on suffering, Grant. Mm -hmm. Share with us some of the thoughts that you that you share in these talks. It's a mixture. I incorporate what my dad was saying of walking and catching your balance, and that was one aspect of it. But the the, the lecture is always focused on the hope that is ahead of us that, that that gives us the resolve to get up and keep going. And the importance of the ecclesia and the brotherhood, both carrying each other's crosses, that was always a factor of all of them. And I gave handicap awareness talks at numerous, many laundry schools around the, around the country and even Ontario. And your message a lot was you could choose to. Your choice is up to you who you, is, what is your mindset, either towards other people or yourself. How do you look at people with disabilities or how do you treat yourself? And what, we all have disabilities in some sense, whether it be our sin nature or a physical impingement. Just what do you choose to do with the talents you have and, and the gifts and the blessings and the, not the cursings, but we're all cursed with this na nature. But what do you choose to do with the roles that God's given you in our, in our, in our life? Because we can handle anything in our life if Christ could handle going to the cross and bearing all our weight on his shoulders. And I really made that come home to me. And every time it's good, it might be annoying to some of my head, head injured or therapy friends are very tired and always sitting down watching TV and medications and make them gain weight. But giving these talks has really made my spiritual side of my, keep my, the spark of my faith alive, the light of my faith. Grace, one of the big points is that you can choose how you respond to suffering. We can't really always say why it happens, just like Glenn was saying earlier. We can't really pinpoint exactly if it's for ourselves, if it's for other people, if it's for a combination mm -hmm. of things. But it does develop your character if you choose to uh, respond in a positive way. Yeah, enjoy, because jo be joyful is also one of the most important commandments in the Bible. Rejoice, yeah. Rejoice be, sing, pray, and all those things that people take for granted. I, I did, and now I'm realizing the importance of them in my life and everyone's lives. It helps. Granted. Yes. <laughs> you were telling me something. Granted. 
you're telling us out of two, two grand, that, that your early life, the, the positivity that you had in your early life really helped with yes. your post recovery as well. Yes. And, and that you wanted to really pass that message on as well. Yes. I'm yeah. adjusting his pillow behind him because it's hard oh, to sit okay. up straight. <laughs> Is there anybody who's wondering what I'm doing? <laughs> yeah. I, I had an acronym for my the students I would speak to at elementary schools. AMPC equals no N squared T equals AMPC for introducing equations in, in young kids' minds. No negative talk equals always make positive choices. And if we in our younger, younger adult life try to not speak negative to our, of ourselves or anyone, and always to make positive choices, we can do anything and go to a place that's better for us and other people. And that's true academically and especially spiritually. It ties, God's put so many harmonies in my life with uh, ther therapies and sp spiritual applications. The blessing and the powerful thing it's in everyone's lives do we take time to notice it like nature around us how beautiful it is and how we didn't create it but it was created before we were like his plan with christ and us you want to do the n square t and I, I had i had i had uh the kids we've done it with adults too <laughs> i divide the, the the school in half and one side I have repeated for me n squared t. Mm, mm, t. Mm, mm, t. The other mm, side mm, I want you to do a m p c a m p c a m and before you know I them keep going with this here a m p c a m p c a m p c before you know it I had them all roll like rocking out to a hip hop beat and that's I gave I gave I mean my bracelets designed to my mind. And we've used them at uh for uh collegial things too. Things too. Yeah. So I I'm not laying around for long. I, I keep very busy, thankfully I still have much too much to do. And we all do. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. So you're really making making I was gonna say lemons out of lemonade. A lemonade <laughs> out of lemon. <laughs> Sometimes we make it the other way around. I mean, yeah. <laughs> not all days are good. <laughs> Just a so, lot in your place. So. I drink a lot of water though. I like lemonade, <laughs> but the best thing is lemonade is water. <laughs> yeah. I can do exhort on that because living the we the living water. Yeah, I spend lots of time listening and studying God's word now. And yeah, he does readings a lot, posts uh, verses, verses on the wall. Posts, and mm -hmm. if we're known for being people of the book, then it will put us in a good light with other people and ourselves and God. And it's helpful for everything. And the waters of wash hydrate our bodies for exercise, heal us when we're sick, and yeah, create a current we can flow through in our life. Have you got anything you really want to, you would really want to tell young people about your experiences, Grant, about, you know, about appreciating life or appreciating family or, or, or you know, yes. anything else? I mentioned in brevity, but the acronym always make positive choices. And I said, because I kind of was living out that unknowingly of my life, always making positive choices, what I did. And not being negative and embracing people in whatever situation they were and helping them. It was a trickle down effect and I would I would encourage younger kids, young people to keep that in mind in their life and it'll serve you in so many ways and you know, with preaching, with just keeping you grounded, especially if you surround yourself with the faithful people and and they'll have a good effect on them and they'll have a great sort of effect on you. And that's the blessing of God God creating two people, not just one person in the Garden of Eden. Because it only takes a very hard for one person, woman or female, regardless, to cut down a New Zealand 
hundred foot wide tree trunk. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if the trees are down there, but, <laughs> but if Dr. Anyway, Seuss designed them, grow it. <laughs> what? But it takes a thousand years to grow it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We need people. Yeah, yeah it's, need. it takes 2,000 years to get make these plants around us walking and breathing and working in our lives. We, we have the power to uproot them and plant them in better fertile, fertile soil, and that's the garden of our ecclesias. And yeah. that's eggs right there. We just yeah, throw we better it. write that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always written before we said it. Let's play back the recording. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Grant, before his accident, uh, he had a, a whiteboard in his room and uh, it had written on there the, the people that he wanted to, to visit, the people that he wanted to see, pray, um, for. pray for, call. Um, and we found that board after he, his accident in his room. And it's funny because when he first woke up from the coma, one of the first persons that he talked about was somebody we know that was really struggling uh, after losing a child and then she had cancer, our, our dear friend Sue Emmerich yeah. in, in the meeting. And um, he had that on his mind when he woke up from the coma. So when he got hit, his brain was where, thankfully, where it was supposed to be. Not that it was perfect because he had his his weaknesses know. too, <laughs> and so I, we're not trying to say that. I'm just saying that that the more we are in a better place, the easier it is when adversity comes along. It's like practicing um, the right thing will help the right thing happen. Yes. Does that that yes. makes any sense. And I was so admirable, what in any regard, in a, more than a couple ways, because I surrounded myself with. People I wanted to get their, get and, and be educated by. Well, he struggled too because he had won twenty thousand dollars from Disney with a group of people to from high school to make it. Uh, to you know, he was on a different trajectory. A Disney miniseries yeah. and that could have and pulled he would have been very, away. very good at it. And was on the entertainment. Sorry, I could okay. I could have gone to entertainment business and. I had friends in that project go off and go on Broadway and even be in movies and TV shows. And so I had a big pull because I'm a performer to go that way. That's why I stood that prayer on the beach at Manitoulin. And, and that's always been carried me through that God has a reason for me to be alive. And you have to keep yourself positive, with your chin up and plug, plug, plug along, plug, plug along. Yeah. And it's not that that would have been a bad life you could do a life like that it's just very difficult to also yeah, it wouldn't be satisfying have uh, your faith built up at the same time it's just more of a challenge to do it that way yeah. and i think he probably could have done it because he was very vocal in his beliefs but it would have been hard and obviously we feel that grant has been his direction has been changed yeah. to meet a different audience is the way you say it yeah. right you're on a different stage yeah. Yeah. And you're certainly reaching that different audience as well. I mean, it's, it, we're really inspired by you. And I know there are hundreds of others who are as well. Um, in fact, I was talking about, I was talking about talking with you the other day about with, with someone at church. And, um, and I said, oh, it was, uh, we're going to be talking to Grant Anderson. And uh, he, he had an accident after a camp at Manitoulin. And one of the, one of the ladies I was talking to said, I was at that camp, and then and then another one who was just standing a little bit further over said, "I was at that camp too." So next thing there was this big discussion, and, and it was really encouraging. And and I, and I know they'll be listening to later wow, on. Wow, who are they? Uh, one was Anna, um, Thomas, Bang Thomas, and uh, Claire Herbert. We're going to get in touch with them yeah. and thank them for that. Um, there were uh, a lot of people that Grant had got involved in um, as far as uh, just being friendships and helping that we didn't even know. We had so many people write us afterwards that Grant had, had helped us do this or Grant got us to do that. And, you know, even people who were in our religious community and people who were in the community at large, um, 
he was very uh, much out there with people getting them to give thanks for their food is was one of what one would say but he also ate all their food yes. too <laughs> i had 30 piano students i knew all those piano students bridges oh, and, we would see, and right? mothers, mothers very well in fact, I, I saw somebody out in uh, New Jersey who, when Grant went out in New Jersey, when they'd made some um, some music out there, one Very of the fathers nice. said, yeah, yeah, your son made himself right at home, and <laughs> right to the refrigerator. <laughs> he felt like his family, he walked on in, I said, that's because you're Deliberto, you're Italian, your family. Yes, yes, yeah, so he was right. And, and it's one of those good things that, 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 that came out of this is that we saw a different side of Grant that, that he didn't brag about, he didn't let us know, but because people felt that they had to tell us about Grant, he told us all these good things and very uplifting things that he did in their lives that we had no idea about. So, you know, I guess in, there's a, there was a little, you know, a little uh, light there in, in a very dark place. And it was very helpful to hear that, well, that was our son, he did those things. and. He said those things and he helped these people. Um, that's what we should be doing in our whole lives, right? <laughs> for instance, I, I encouraged my parents, the 30 or 40 of them, to pray for the meals. In fact, I did pray with some, pray with some, pray with some of them and read with them the God's word. And if they had any questions, they'd ask me what my opinions were on Bible passages. So that was uh, also, um, I think, in putting it perspective of anybody's family, Often we think that our kids are, are on the wrong path or on the wrong road or, you know, because we were concerned about Grant being in a performance uh, career, um, that we do need to trust in God that sometimes they do more things than we, we, we tend, I don't know if I'm making sense, but we have a tendency to, to think the worst mm. instead of thinking the best. And um, we should think the best of our children. And, and he has some faith in them that what we've hopefully taught them has taken root. Yeah. yeah. I don't know Thank if that you. makes sense. But, but. At a certain point, the plant needs it to grow and it's, it's, and it's, and it's plot of soil without having its hands in its roots. And I'm getting there day by day. And one day I can grow on my own. Yeah. So Glenn and Julie, what what advice would you give to other parents who find themselves going through the same sort of thing? Because it's it's I mean if it hasn't happened, it's gonna happen to someone at some stage, uh, where their child is incapacitated in some way or or, or worse. Um, what what advice would you give to parents to, to keep their faith, to stay strong and to keep going through those really tough times? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, one thing, our children, you know, I'm trying to put a positive spin on here, think positive. Sometimes our kids don't do positive things and sometimes they do. And there you can, uh, often you can blame yourself for the things that happen. You should have done things this way. You should have done things that way. Um, I would just really pause and consider, um, to not take the time to blame yourself because <laughs> it, it not only is it not good for yourself, it's not good for anybody around you. Um, it's good to stay, stay focused and move forward and to um, just work with what God has given you um, and not think, you know, I, I had some people say, you know, well, your son was so involved. Why did it happen to him? You know, and, and not someone, you know, not, they didn't say not someone else, but uh, just why is he taking down somebody who's so active in, in the ecclesial work? And sometimes we can think, well, another child may not be active in, in such things. And are we even at more of a danger of something happening because of that? Well, I don't think that's why these things happen. I don't think we can say you did something good, something good's going to happen. You did something bad, something bad's going to happen. That was also a theme of my lecture, my suffering lecture. Yeah, and I think the lesson of Job is really uh, important with that, too. Uh, we don't have direct um, retribution, 
for um, what we do. And because um, if we did, we'd probably all be underneath trucks. It's um, it's a real difficult thing because when you're in the midst of a of a thematic situation, you don't want to hear a lot of stuff that people say because you're so in so so much turmoil and and people say the wrong things and things that at that point are not helpful. And we found that that you can let people know who are in difficult circumstances that you're there to listen to them if they need that without spouting all sorts of advice based upon your own experiences because we found that a lot of that was not that helpful at the time we were in it. So now we look back and we are a little more circumspect in what we say and what we do. Um, as far as as the, the, the advice that I would give in general is that you need to remember the big picture. It's, it's, perspective. It's, the, it's perspective, it's the macro view. We tend to look at the micro view of our lives and the things that we're going through, how hard they are. And we ask the hard questions, why, why, why? But we need to see it from God's point of view, which is the macro view, the, the big picture. Where is this leading to? And often we don't have the answer because we can't see the big picture. And that's where our faith and trust in God comes from. I don't know if you've ever heard of the comparison of the ant and the cathedral, which is one that I like. You have the ant crossing the floor of a, of a great cathedral and has no knowledge or understanding of the great edifice that is surrounding it with its beauty and the history and the architecture and the, and the structure of this building because it's so intent on its own way of just crossing that floor. Well, that's kind of like God and us. We cannot always see the big picture, but we can have trust that in the big picture, it's for our benefit, for it's our long-term salvation. And, and when we, we're in that place, I think we can often uh, more fully endure the circumstances. It's, it's like the first century believers, they were so confident in the, in the resurrection and, and the promise that Jesus gave of life everlasting, that they could endure the persecutions that they went through, that they could preach in the, in the, in the face of open hostility because they saw the risen Lord. They were confident in the resurrection of the dead. So they could endure those things. And I think when we look at the big picture where this is all leading, it gives us a, a hope. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, fantastic. I'd like to add to that because uh, that was beautiful, Glenn. I, I really like yes. that. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure next explanation, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is difficult to hear things from people. I, I have to agree with that. But I also want to emphasize that it's better to say something and have a connection with people than it is to not say anything at all because it's a lonely place to be when people don't want to talk to you because they don't know how to say or what to say it's better to say something and you know work it through and um at least it was for me it, you know i i'm not a uh, uh isolated person i like people support from people and uh and i might not always agree with what everybody says but i do want that connection and so it, something that is it, it yeah well i think a lot of us do but some yeah. some people yeah. are more you know to themselves but yeah. i i think um we need to to learn how to speak with one another when people are going through struggles to be more like glenn said more empathetic um and and be a listening ear and just be there for them for a hug or just to say this stinks <laughs> say, you know, yeah, that really stinks, isn't it? That's it really is Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Not thank you. you again no. so much. Oh, yeah. You know, Sorry. Thank you so much for right. sharing. Yeah. We really appreciate you taking this oh, time yeah. Yeah, to thanks. share your story with us. And the um, just the hope and the inspiration that that comes out of it, and um, yeah, this the, the victories along the way, and yeah.
and I, what I love, you've done with it. And I love the way you brought out the music and the joy and, and you know, keeping really positive, the um, positive choices and no negative talk. I think that's amazing. You know, and and I just think that's a real inspiration to to others to be able to to get through pretty much any trial that we have, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that the trials do come from God, and um, and they are for our benefit in the long run. Um, so yeah, I we, we really appreciate what you've done for well, us thank today. You. Thank you so much. I, I do want to say because we say these messages doesn't mean we're always good at it. <laughs> we do we do want it that way, but we're not always good at it. We're we're working at it just like anybody else. So if anybody's out there thinking that it's easy, it's it's not. Like my stinking joke, everybody yeah. stinks at one point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. No, I understand. Totally understand. Yeah. So um next week we are taking a break from Family Matters. Uh, we're going to be trying to do once every two weeks from now on. Um, so the 17th of August, we have a, another really interesting topic, Miscarriage, the Bitter and the Sweet, with Nathan and Susanna Lewis. Um, and then on the 31st of August, we have another topic, in Technology and Internet Safety, um, with Glenn Davis. So we're looking forward to those uh, two two topics coming up and there is more by the way there's more after that but i'm not going to tell you if you want to get um information about family matters just email me uh robert at thinkythings.com and i will send you um emails with uh what's coming up and what's been and any resources and like for today's uh, this week's and last week's i'll send you a whole lot of video links that you can look at of his, of his um, progress in, in healing. Um, you can also see past recordings. Um, and again, that'll be on the email link and on the, um, yeah, on the link that I'll show you. Um, so yeah, Grant, would you be able to close with prayer for us, please? Absolutely, brother. Uh, All right, here you. we go. Dear Father, Dear mighty Lord, God in heaven, we thank you and praise you and magnify your name for you have made all things in their place and their time and you made thing, all things good. Not, we realize every moment, but we, we have hope and joy in you and your son that you will make it right. And we can see that every day that you help us get up and you put you put light in the morning and we even have light in the night through Christ and dark times dear Lord keep us strong from this time on and bless us as every day we come together with other believers no matter where they are in the world thank you for this day and age where we can have such close, close connections over such great distances Please help us to utilize these blessings that this time period in history has allows for us to preach, teach, and live and have our being. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Please send the time when they son will rule and all nations will flow to Israel. Thank you, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 So thank you very much, all of you. Um, it's been it's been fantastic to have you all. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us.